sharing is pause. There it is. the tea warm never showing no warm never showing no Harder, then they poison the food in the water. Ooh. People losing their son.
Oh, come here inside my garden. I have roses for your hair. It's the only gift you'll take, love. Is it more than I can bear? I can see you were a traveler when I crept
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October edition of Second Saturday Zoom Versations with the Hamner Theater. The event we have planned for today is a series of scenes and songs that have been created as part of the Newtown Project. Before we begin, I want to take a moment and introduce you to the Hamner and the Newtown Project. The Hamner was founded in 2005 by Peter Coy and Bumi Pedersen with the express intent of telling the stories of our community, producing professional quality performances in collaboration with the community and other area theaters, providing educational and training opportunities for any and all interested members of the community, and working with local playwrights to develop new work. The Newtown Project came right out of this mission. In 1985, the Greenwood chemical plant exploded for the final time, killing four people. Before its explosive ending, the chemical plant seeped poison into the surrounding community and was regularly visited by the fire department when smaller explosions caused the building to catch on fire. The community most affected by the plant was an African-American enclave called Newtown. In the summer of 2018, Boomi brought together a group of local playwrights, directors, musicians, and actors to dive into the history of Newtown and bring their stories to life on the stage. Now, of course, we've moved to Zoom. What you are about to see is a selection of dramatic interpretations and responses to the historical research done by the collective. Theater doesn't exist in a bubble. We are looking to our past to uncover our present. These pieces were not created to live in a museum, but to add to our current cultural conversation, which is why we invite the audience to join us on Zoom after the presentation to talk about what you saw today. Before we begin, I'd like to offer you two things that I've been thinking about since I first heard the pieces that you are about to hear today. In 1966, the Black Panther Party published their 10 point program. The final item on the list was this. We want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. It has been over six years since the citizens of Flint, Michigan have had water that is safe to drink. The first person I'd like to ask to join us today is Miss Tanya Kay. She is going to be playing a song that she wrote for this project called Newtown. Take a look around. Everything in Newtown's all shut down. No, 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 nobody's hanging out in this town. Newtown. for freed slaves who work the field at Mirador and came to Newtown after Lincoln's war. Newtown was a new town long ago and I want to know Won't you tell me if you know the burning new town? The burning new town may keep burning new town down. New town's burning. See the famous 
Thomas Greenwood factory. Eighty-five folks burned alive in a chemical explosion. The burning new town. Thank you, Tanya. Next, we are going to show two uh, shorter pieces back to back, um, both by John Lawson, that are part of uh, a larger new town play that he's been putting together. The first we're going to see is called County Planners, and the second is called Cockerill. J.B., a white male, a member of the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors, A.P., a white male, County Executive of Albemarle County, L.M., white male, Head Planner for Albemarle County, Phipps, a white male, a new hire in the planning office, a secretary. The setting is J.B.'s office at the county office building in Charlottesville, a desk, several chairs, a telephone, a large map is prominently displayed. The scene takes place in the late 1940s. At the rise, J.B. is seated at his desk reviewing papers. There's a knock at the door. What is it? That group you're expecting, sir? Send him in. Will do. A.P. Ellen. Who's this? Uh, this is Phipps. He's new in planning. Phipps, is it? Yes, sir. Glad to meet you. <clears throat> LM, didn't your uh, a boy here forget something? Forget? You let him walk around like that? Oh, oh, oh. you mean, uh, yes, uh, Phipps, go find your suit coat. Suit coat, sir? You don't come into the office of a member of the board in your shirt sleeves, son. Oh, uh... I, I, sorry, sir. Hey, don't be sorry. Just run and get it. Yes, sir. And bring me a Coca-Cola from the machine. Oh, yes, sir. You boys want something cold? Not me. UAP, hot enough to melt brass. He's gone already. I can send a girl. Nah, that's all right. 
Let's get on with it. What's this all about? It's this damn cockerel. Cockerel? The, the chemist. Yeah. He's badgering us to let him build a plant in Crozet. A chemical plant? Yeah. You talked to DuPont about it? LM, you called DuPont? Yeah, uh, manager over there, Willis, says this guy, Cockerill, worked for him for a few years. So this guy, Cockerville. Uh, co Cockerill. Cockerill, Cockerville, whatever. He knows what he's doing. Willis says the guy knows chemistry, but he's weird. Weird? Yeah, I could have told you that. He's uh, strange, a real know-it-all. Well, maybe he does know it all. Anyway, DuPont doesn't mind if we let him build? Not as long as we don't compete for labor. Uh, they don't want to get into a bidding war. Got to keep those wages low. And will he try to hire away their guys? Not likely. Anyway, Cockerill may not even come up with the funding. He's talking about building on Macomb Road. Oh, no. We're saving that length of 240 for strategic development, not some off-the-wall chemical operation. I can't believe... LM, are you stupid or what? Not last I heard. You should have shut that guy down the first time he mentioned Macomb Road. Jesus. Hey, they need some jobs out at that end of the county. I know that. You think I don't know that? Yeah, but just think for a goddamn second. Chemicals stink, right? You ever smelled one of those home chemical sets? Yeah, yeah. You want to have this weird know-it-all brewing up big vats of God knows what right here in the middle of town? Stinking up the place for miles around? I, I mean, you ever drive by DuPont on a summer day? Sulfur and benzene so thick in the air it'll make your eyes water. Folks in Waynesboro don't seem to mind. <laughs> That's because DuPont's been there forever. And it's the biggest employer in town. They're used to it. But Crozet now, we all of a sudden let this little piss ant stink things up in downtown Crozet. This office is going to be so chock full of rednecks bitching and moaning, I won't be able to catch a breath for six months. <laughs> I mean, talk about smell. Some of these white trash ain't been near a bathtub in years. <sighs> I'd have to wash down the walls to get the stink out. Now, nah, that ain't happening. Besides, they're all on wells out there, no city water. What if Cockerill spills some of whatever cockamamie shit he decides to brew up? You're right. You're right, JB. There's some risks. But hell, there's risks in everything. Putting in a gas station's a risk. Big tanker trucks full of gas driving through town. LM's right, JB. There's a balance. We got to keep up with the time. Balance. Balance. OK, you guys talk to all them bitching rednecks? Nah, I didn't think so. I'm the one's going to take the flack. I'm the elected official. You guys are just the employees. Sure be nice to score some jobs out in that direction, though. And you know, JB, new jobs never hurt come re-election time. Well, yeah, it, it ain't. I don't want to shut this guy down completely, but not on Macomb, not downtown. No way. Maybe we could get him to choose a new site out of town. <laughs> well, at last. Where you been, boy? Give me that. Well, who's that one for? This one's for me. Oh, give it here. AP, you want one? No, thanks. All right. More for me. You need to explain the facts of life to this boy, LM. Or hey now. All right. Now you're looking sharp, boy. That's fine. It, it was straighten your tie. Well, that's, all right. Now, where were we? Where are we going to put Cockerel's plant? Actually, uh, I asked Phipps here to look into that a little, dig up some options. Him? Well, yeah, I thought he might have some new ideas. Really? All right, boy, show us what you got. Uh, well, gentlemen, I don't pretend to understand the politics of it all, but from the standpoint of professional land use perspective... Shit, boy. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Um, it, it, 
if you look here, we've got these two massive agriculture zoned areas well away from the residential areas. If we could talk to one of those owners into selling a corner of one of those properties. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. These two properties right here? Y yes, sir. LM, you let him do this? Well, I, well, um. You, you know what those properties are, boy. <laughs> Well, like I say, they're zoned agricultural, which means... Don't tell me what it means. I know what it means. Jesus, God, you know who owns those parcels? Uh, I, I believe one of them belongs to, let me see, a Thomas Martin. Tommy Martin, founder of Martin's Foods. Tommy Ra Martin, that's right. Founder of Martin's Foods. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know. Of course you didn't. That property of his you're talking about, that's his horse farm. And the one next to it? Well, that belongs to Ida Jennings, heir to the Wapshot fortune. These, boy, all these belong to the people we really serve. Now, I know you think we're all public servants and we serve everybody and everybody's equal and all that claptrap they teach in fifth grade. But the truth is, one of these folks out here snaps a finger, we all gone. You, me, AP here, LM. These people with money, boy, the people who pull the strings. Push come to shove, we in business for one purpose and one purpose only, to keep those folks happy. And putting a chemical plant on their land ain't what they call keeping them happy. Now, that's just a cold stock reality. And it's just a shame LM didn't make that clear to you right from the start but it's something we all of us got to live with. So you want to get by around here, you better remember. Am I wrong? AP, LM? You right, JB. Yes, sir. That is the way it is. Sorry, I, I didn't see what Phillips came with in advance. No harm done. Now he knows, don't you, boy? Yes, sir. Fine. So you're going to watch yourself in future. Absolutely. Sir. So, where you suggest we put this cockerel plant? Uh, let's see. Uh, Blue Ridge, Jarman's Gap. What's here? Oh, that's uh, Newtown. What about that? Ain't nothing but coloreds out there, is there? Right. That's right, AP. Uh, won't they object to the chemical smells? So what? The whole damn nest of them have to move the hell out of there. It's no skin off my behind. Better them than white folk. What is it, LM? I don't know. This, this cockerel's mighty set on that Macomb Road site, and we don't want to scare him out of the county. No, you're right. Got to keep him in case he can actually come through. Of course, property will be a lot cheaper in Newtown. Ain't nothing but a bunch of shanties out yonder. Nickels on the dollar. Tell you what, you say he's got trouble digging up financing on this plant of his? Don't know for sure, but I doubt he's got any. Well, I'll tell you what to do. You give Dave Jones over, over at Heritage Bank a call. Mm -hmm. See if he'd be willing to pony up some financing, but only on condition that Cockerell moves, agrees to move his plant to Newtown. That's brilliant, AP. He'll have the site, he'll have the financing, and he'll save money on the land to boot. And if that don't convince him, nothing can. What about the folks out there in Newtown? The Blacks? What about them? I mean, don't we need to let them know? Let them know? Why? They don't vote. Hell, 90% of them can't afford the poll tax. We ain't here for them, and they know it. Maybe, but everybody's got hope, right? I mean, you need hope just to get out of bed every day and walk around. I bet we could give those Newtown folks some hope. I'll bet we could make them feel downright good about getting a new plan in the neighborhood. No harm trying. Well, I guess not. You want to sell them on the idea? I don't mind. Six of one to me. How about... 
I'm just brainstorming. What, what if we find a site then talk to a couple of black pastors over in Newtown and sell the idea to them, you know? New town, new new plant, new job opportunities, chance to move their community forward, all the usual rah-rah bullshit. Black folk do listen to their pastors. Hey, maybe we can get this cockerel to spring for a chicken dinner to introduce himself to new neighbors. Get one of the pastors to open with a prayer. Hell, I might show up myself, walk around, eat some chicken, press some flesh. <laughs> Better to keep them down with a smile and a chicken leg than a gun. Exactly. Yeah, matter of fact, I might even take young Phipps here along with me. Help me spread the good news about all them new jobs to the folks out in Newtown. What do you think about that, boy? Phipps? No. What? What'd you say? What'd you say? I, I said... No, sir. No, I don't want any part of it. Phipps, do you realize who you're talking to? No, no, let him speak. What's your problem, son? Well, sir, I expect you'll laugh, but I happen to regard myself as a gentleman. Oh, well then. Yes, and uh, as that rare thing, a real Southern gentleman, and that means I'll never look any man black or white in the face and say something I know to be a lie. L.M., you better get this boy under control right now. Phipps, Let me Phipps. tell you something, son. Politics, and like it or not, in your job, you are a politician. Politics ain't about getting people what they want. It's about telling them a pretty story. It's about holding out a golden vision, a dream they can believe in. Well, in other words, it's the art of bullshit. You dangle that big fat carrot out ahead of the mules. You let them see it and smell it. They can almost taste it. And you make them believe they can get a hold of it if they just take one more step and one more step and just one more. Now, son, in the event, the very unlikely event, that you survive in this job for another five minutes, you're going to have to come down off that cloud. That Southern gentleman stuff, that's the dream. That's the carrot somebody's dangling in your face. Listen to him, boy. Get shut of it. Think about it. Push come to shove, Southern gentlemen drop all these noble ideas you're talking about. They do whatever it takes. Lie, cheat, backstab, enslave, and if necessary, pick up a bullwhip or a gun. But maybe Phipps ain't really interested in working here. You want your job, son? I won't lie to you, gentlemen. I need this job. I'd really like to keep it. We all uh, hope you will, son. If you get your mind straight. But what I've got to know is... Phipps. No. Go ahead, son. What do you got to know? If I go out with you to out to Newtown and I look at those folks in the eye and talk about all these wonderful jobs coming their way, Will that be a lie? The truth is, I don't know. I don't know what that knucklehead cockerel's gonna do, who he's gonna hire, who he ain't. Now, you satisfied? Let me put it another way. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stop it, Phipps, you got your answer. If you were in cockerel's place, sir, would you give some of those jobs to the black folks out in Newtown? You haven't figured that out by now, son? I guess not. <laughs> All right, here's the answer. No, I would not. Never, not ever. Not even if gentle Jesus himself come down out of the sky and handed me a million dollars. Great meeting, Alan. Well, let's move down the road about 20 years and see what happens to that chemical plant in Newtown. 
Justine is the office of the Greenwood Chemical Company. A desk, three or four chairs, the time is 1968. The characters in order of appearance, Charles Hustralid, president of the High Point Chemical Company. Al Saragino, president of Greenwood Chemical. Sophie, Saragino's secretary. And Neil Cockrell, former owner of Cockrell Chemical Company. At the rise, Hesterlid and Saragino are bent over a legal document on Saragino's desk. You know, Clarence, I think that language is ironclad. I keep telling you, Al, there's no such thing as ironclad. Words, words, what do they mean? Anything. A contract only means what some judge thinks it means. Well, you've got more experience than I do with this kind of thing. Damn right. Mr. Cockrell's here, sir. Yes, Sophie. Uh, okay, may I send him in? <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. You ready? Yeah. Neil. Cockrell enters. He limps badly and uses a cane. Neil, good to see you again. You remember Clarence Husterlid? Yes, good to see you. Uh, have a seat. Well, I can see you've done that already. So, what's all this about? Well, we've been reviewing our contract with you. Oh? Yeah, well, in light of certain discoveries. What do you mean? Well, as we've implemented new production procedures, we found some irregularities. The electrical system in the plant, for example. Ah, there's nothing wrong with electrical system. Well, I'm afraid there is. It's completely out of code for starters. Code? Code. <laughs> Listen, I designed the electrical system myself. It's perfect for a chemical plant, you understand? Well, I'm a chemist. Decades and decades at DuPont. And you're telling me, I know what a chemical plant needs, all right? Me, you think some sniveling code enforcement officer knows what the chemical business needs better than me? Well, yeah, but you know, there have been fires. Fires, carelessness, it's all that is. I mean, you hire a bunch of these dumb yokels, half-trained, uneducated monkeys. Oh, you gotta tell him is all. <laughs> you gotta say, uh, look at here, fool. This is dangerous stuff you're looking around. Toline, benzene, uh, keep that stuff away from those electrical outlets and don't light up a cigarette with, with, within a country mile of this plant. Oh, of course, they won't listen. They never listen. Nobody listens. That's the trouble. Nobody ever listens. Yes, well, we didn't realize when we purchased the plant from you. We took it on good faith that the electrical system was up to specs, that it was worthy to pass inspection. It did pass inspection, always. Oh, you saying it failed inspection? No, it's passed inspection. Of course it did. But it's not worthy to pass inspection. It's a fire trap, a, a, a rat's nest, wires crisscrossing everywhere. Look, oh, you think those stupid bastards out of Charlottesville know their ass from their elbow? That's the kind of work they're used to out here in the boonies. And even if one of those pencil neck bureaucrats noticed something a little unexpected, uh, you think they're gonna raise a stink? All you gotta do, one of them gets out of line, you gotta set it, take them aside and you tell them, look here, bucko. You try to tell me how to run my business, I'll shut it down. <laughs> Simple as that, I'll, I'll walk. Uh, you think those bosses downtown, their department heads and whatever, you think they wanna shut down businesses and lose jobs over what? A couple code violations. Oh, the country supervisors would have their asses on the curb so fast that would, no, yes, well, unfortunately, the electrical system isn't the only issue. There are those lagoons full of chemicals. Lagoons? <laughs> you knew about those lagoons. Well, I've been producing chemicals here for 20 years. Now the waste has to go somewhere. Oh, well, we knew there were lagoons. We just didn't realize how defectively designed they were. Defectively? Oh, defectively, hell. 
I designed those lagoons personally. Well, that may be, but they're not functioning correctly. They're leaking like sieves, contaminating the groundwater. Nonsense. Those are my designs, I tell you. We want you out. Okay. You're out. Pack your things. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? I'm not forgetting shit. When I sold the place to you guys last year, we all signed a little something called a contract. And that contract clearly states that I get to- You get to work here as long as you want, we know. But you breached that contract by failing to reveal the goddamn mess you stuck us with. Well, that's your failure to do your due diligence. You buy something, you better know what you're buying. Caveat emptor. No, I'm not packing anything. And as long as I keep reporting for work, you gentlemen are going to keep make good on your commitment to keep paying me. You seriously think a judge is going to enforce that? Oh, yeah. Well, I've got news. No way. <laughs> yeah. Well, we see about that in court. Neil, before you go, let me ask you something. How'd you get that limp? Oh, you know damn well how I got it. Well, tell me again. I was designing an airbag. A part exploded and blew out part of my leg. Ooh, that must have smarted. <laughs> Every day. So, just for grins, try to imagine yourself as a judge listening to this case between two serious businessmen like uh, Al here uh, and me on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, a jack of all trades like yourself. Uh, you, Neil, a man who thinks he's an expert at electrical engineering, at chemical manufacturing and storage, at toxic lagoon design, a guy who's responsible for multiple fires, who stinks up the whole neighborhood with his chemicals, a guy who smells like a walking chemical experiment, a guy who's such an expert at airbag design that one day while he's farting around in the lab, he blows his own leg off. Now, if you're that judge, which side do you think he's gonna take? The two serious businessmen or the oddball, the dabbler, the ego tripping fuckwit? Don't, don't bother to answer now. Just put that in your pipe and smoke it and then pack your shit, you're done. I think he'll go. You can never tell with that idiot, but he's gone, voluntarily or not. So I guess we've got a lot of remedial work to do. What do you mean? Well, the electrical system, the lagoons. What about them? Well, we've got to replace them, right? Are you nuts? Do you have any idea how much that would cost? Well, not offhand, but uh, I can imagine. No, 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 no. Everything stays as is. If that moron could get away with it for 20 years, so can we. But Al, mum's the word, you got me? Your lips are sealed, understand? Oh, Sophie, and with coffee, yes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Saragino, I tried to get this part before Mr. Cockrell left, but... No sweat, Sophie. You won't be seeing much of Cockrell anymore. I know that'll break your heart. Sophie here had, uh, what should we say, Sophie? Uh, a less than favorable impression of Mr. Cockrell. Would that be fair? More than fair, Mr. Saragino. Mr. Cockrell can become wearisome. Oh, delicate. delicately, delicately put, Sophie. I'd call him an asshole if I were feeling charitable. <laughs> uh, no, uh, wait, uh, wait, wait. What's the matter? Uh, that coffee, S Sophie, you didn't make it with uh, water from around here, did you? <laughs> water from around the plant? You think we're crazy? No, sir, never. Only bottled water for us, Clarence. A new shipment every week. Oh, okay. Well, sure. Uh, give me a cup, Sophie, and, and please have a cup yourself.
Thank you. Um, at this point, I would like to ask Tanya Kay to come back. She is going to play her song, Don't Drink the Water. Daddy, daddy, no water ain't right. Hit your liver like a black snake bite. Poison working evil on your sleeve. New town water full of toluene. Mama, mama, here you cry. Lost your baby and she don't know. Thank you, Miss Kay. We have one final offering this evening before we um, go to our Zoom versation. Um, this last piece is by Royal Cherie, and it is called Boomtown, a truly explosive 20 minute play. Pictures. The little girl, a tell it like it is kind of girl about eight years old. Charles Ward Jr., a former Greenwood plant worker. Janet Sims, a Newtown resident. The man, the representative. Like fire, huh? Shut up in my bones. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse nine. Newtown, Virginia was nearly annihilated in 1985 when Greenwood Chemical Plant finally had a major chemical explosion. Four men out of about a dozen workers died. Fire was everywhere. Wind drips, rain, falling ash, tainted colored water not only killed fish, livestock, and poisoned gardens, but residents of Newtown and surrounding communities developed strange cancers and fatal respiratory diseases. No one really knew everything. Now they know everything, almost. The little girl enters with crayons and paper.
it seemed like that went into, it seemed like everybody, everybody that went to Mount Zion had one of those real heavy silver pots with handles that lock and a lid with a spinning top, a pressure cooker. It cooks fast. It hisses like a rattler when it gets real hot. The steam hissing out of that spinning top. Mm -hmm. The steam looked like a skinny beam lighting up, changing the air around it. And the more hissing steam that beamed up, the faster the spinning top would spin. I know it would take a whole week to cook all that food. You know, the Sunday church dinners, it had all this food. Mama said not to mess with the pot because it can blow up and leave a big mess all over the place. And most of the mess is going to be the burns on your body. Mama said heat and fire don't discriminate what's going to burn. So I was outside and it started to rain, you know, sprinkling. I didn't see no clouds. I heard that if the sun is shining and it's raining, that the devil is beating up his wife. <laughs> but one time it got real cloudy and a lot of people in the church, they worked at that plant beside it and then something blew up. And I said, hard-headed Hannah, must have been playing with the pressure cooker and blew it up. And I bet it's a mess all over the place, but it's going to be a bigger mess when her mama finds out. And then my mama came out. She came out on the porch. She looked at the plant and screamed for me to come in. So I did. Hope Ward Jr. enters. It ain't no more than 13 or so work there. Most of us color folk. What color? And most of us near about the same age, so that means all us young and poor, cause the pay keep us poor and keep us there. And that means that it's a good chance that's how and where we gonna die. Poor young folk. But ain't nobody know how old or young Keith is. And Keith ain't telling nobody, hell. Keith may not even be his name for all I know. But he a good man. That's what counts. Yes, sir. Now, the church is right near the plant and some must go there, and I guess all of Mount Zion praying that we ain't feeling some kind of relief, cause some broke is better than knowing that the lint in your pocket got lonely and left kind of broke. Getting paid and doing Satan's work cause something just didn't set well with me or any of us with what we were doing with something we don't know nothing about. Women folk praying cause they may be caring and breathing air that won't meant to be breathing life. You breathing in and living in death, you likely not to be breathing in death cause you dead. We are on the outside cause of what we are on the inside. We're all just so happy that this tragedy happened at Newtown. It didn't just happen to those directly impacted, but indirectly, tragedy happened to all of us, really. Tragedy spreads. The loss will be felt. We lost four good men, and the laws allow us to compensate the families in circumstances such as this, as a good and moral company would and do. Now, Understand that no amount of anything will reunite a family, and we wanted everyone to know. It was the maximum. The court ruled that, and the employment contracts as well, mind you. What we did was fair and right, and I would never conceive of a thought that I would do something so vile as to not be responsible for the products and the people. For profit? 
I'm sorry, but my soul is not for sale. That is for rent. Well, <coughs> they say the Lord won't put more on you than you can stand. Well, I guess I'll just take me a seat then. Now, I ain't questioning the Lord, mind you. Just need a seat. Because it's like Pastor Preach one time. Like fire ha, shut up in my bones. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, he was on fire. Woo. You should have seen the church jump up to that feet to their feet on that one. They all got happy. All them church nurses with fans trying to cool all them happy people down. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, it won't unusual for the plant to shut down, man. You cause the leaks and fires to be put out, cause something done blew up. Air ain't clean to see and breathe, and the fire trucks come because all this foul smelling liquid we working with in those vats. One over there, one over there, and some underground everywhere leaking acres. For how long? Had to do something with them. And folk always getting sick and can't breathe or nothing for some days, for all their days. Eyes burning, can't catch a breath. I ain't lying. Everywhere, everybody, even the firemen, they said they had to be up there quite a few mighty times cause of explosions and you should have seen them when he said how much in fear they was for their safety cause they didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I couldn't argue with them, mind you. I had to remind him who's calling him. Now, I'm sure it was common discussion in the home about if we eat and what we bury. Well, we know we is, cause if the water ain't clear and don't taste right or look right or smell right all the time and fish and stock dying and water come out the ground and fruits and vegetables feed on the water underground and that's a problem. Not to mention we water them and it rains on them and people being buried in the same poison that killed them. Ain't that ironic. Ain't no dignity in that kind of home going. It's like they trying to knock all us poor and colored folk out. Or maybe that's what they think about us poor and colored folk. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. We pray real hard for the blessing of that food. We told them, the man, they knew. Inspectors, union, man, I tell you, keep in reading something or hearing something. We can't start no union. I kept telling him, man, you crazy. They ain't going to give no union, no 13 people, and most of us color too. What color were they? But what can we do? That's quiet talk. Can only fuss but so much, make a little noise. But ain't nobody gonna hear. It's like using a water rag to cover a crater. We all be holding to something. You talking about a bunch of rich white folk, the man, the owners, the agency people, the administration people, the county and state people. Maybe not all of them, but enough of them. The man, the owner, the masters. And they just as poor, even if they don't work at the plant, except in this time, it ain't just color folk now enslaving us something of the same thing the color folk always is. 
is some of them white folk too with masters. Is that what they are? Why? It's, it's too many leaks and fires coming along and don't seem like much is getting done to fix it. Not even wrapped in toilet paper. And we all knew it was going to happen and we keep a watchful eye on the words in Mark chapter 13. But on that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. And we didn't know the day or the hour, but we knew it was going to be a day. The Greenwood Chemical Plant provided the local community jobs. We gave to the community and provide a service beneficial to companies that benefit thousands, if not millions, well, hundreds of thousands of employees and families. No, I'm leaving modesty behind. I'll say it. It was millions, millions. What I'm saying is the good services we provide not only benefit the local community, but services used for products and in industry, agricultural, pharmaceutical, and photographic developments. We're proud of what we can do to help others any way we can. First been in the city. Charlottesville is a day trip from Newtown, probably half an hour. And anytime I go to the city, any big city really, I'm always grateful to come back home where it's quiet, has color. You know, even nothing has sound. Nothing has color. All the different colors of whatever it is that belongs there. Well, anyway, sorry, I'm just an old sentimental gal, I guess. And my kids would walk around the grounds it wasn't a real hard walk. We'd sometimes end up behind the plant because technically we're neighbors. There were so many trees. It was around Christmas time and me and my son went out looking for a Christmas tree. It wasn't the first time, but the last time. Something was terribly wrong. The smell was unbearable. So we put our shirts over our face and we walked up to blue water and dead animals in it, even mice. I remember walking to the bus stop to get my son off the bus and I got in halfway to the stop when I heard this explosion. I could see smoke and the chemical plant. The men were running out of the chemical plant screaming and hollering. I can still hear them screaming. I will always hear their screaming. It was the kind of wailing that only comes from great pain. The raging and ravenous fires of death. And they got up the road about halfway. I see some of the men's clothes looked like they had melted or something. I wanted to scream with them and talk to them. You don't forget about suffering the first time you experience it. I went to my sister's house and called someone and there was a woman who worked for this rescue squad who said to bring whatever water we can. The men were almost at the top of the road and she told us to set them down and wrap them in sheets and talk anything and we stop them. Oh, my heavenly father. Those poor men, those had melted into their skin. Their skin was stuck on the clothes. So bad. We'll never not be able to see that. Uh-oh. The washing machine is starting and the dirt's coming out. Now, of course, and eventually, uh, it was designated a perpetual Superfund site. 
which means the EPA considers it a little concerning that it might threaten health. It turns out, I'm sure far before my tenure in training, uh, but my inheritance, um, but it seems like I've always been here, that there were 600 leaking drums and cylinders. And it also revealed that seven unlined lagoons were filled with some toxic waste. What a shame. Some of those toxins cause cancer, unfortunately, very unfortunately. And again, before my tenure, and I was just as shocked and disappointed, mind you, to learn that these containers held chemicals responsible for various cancers, liver and kidney damage, birth defects, and spontaneous abortions. It also turns out that these chemicals were benzene, cyanide, arsenic, phosphine, and hydrogen chloride, and sadly, others. However, after some extensive cleanup and contributions of a collaborative desire to help these people, now the property is ready to host humans again. And although there is slope, biking or hiking would be preferred, suggested, and a better way of experiencing nature. It's ready. There is nothing dangerous at all. However, I, I would caution you of groundwater, but the surface is fine. See? Corporations are people. People are corporations. The common three-strand thread here is people. We have been asked to train firefighters and first responders in unfortunate events, such as chemical explosions. Oh, it was wonderful. It was an honor to demonstrate a history of commitment. In 1992, I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis, a chronic disorder of unknown origins. <laughs> you talking about that minority lung disease? <laughs> I think you talking about my life. You took my life. <laughs> Now, March of 2003, I had to have a lung transplant. I had no choice but to keep the color of nothing in my mind, especially after selling my house in 2005 and moving in with my sister to be closer to the hospital. The sound and color of nothing. Hmm. But anyway, five months later, I started spitting up blood a lot. And they found that my other lung was damaged real bad. And they had to remove that as well. And it's not like it seemed like, but it was a fact that most everybody I knew got some kind of problem. <laughs> My brother, Eldie Jr., he died in 2013. He was only 60. He had bone cancer. <laughs> he had to have a, a marrow transplant, but it didn't work for him at all. Now, it was six of us, and all the other five kids that lived up in that house got some kind of problem. <laughs> I think... I think a whole lot of it had to do with that there chemical plant. See, so many people in that community were passing away well before me with breathing problems and cancer. And I don't care about what the EPA said after cleanup. We started buying bottled water. So. What happened was it came to the attention of a federal agency in 1985 when there was this explosion. A spark ignited a vat of vapors of a flammable industrial cleaning solvent. And there was a report from the fire officials that the explosion was because of some electrical equipment that had state required 
safety devices. But once again, after everything, only the RW3 well, which is the residential well number three, had detectable concentrations of six contaminants in 2013, including one bischloroethyl ether that exceeded standards for groundwater. The health department determined that in the last five years, that was the only instance. So there's, there's no cause for concern, worry, or loss of appetite. But think about it. The risk is very low if you take into consideration how much water a person consumes and the length of residency. There's no need for concern. Trust me, it's more protected than drinking tap water. And that has, quote, very protected health values, unquote. Mama said it ain't your head you see when you bury it in the sand. I've been in the city. Charlottesville is a day trip from Newtown, probably about half an hour. And anytime I go to the city, any big city really, I'm always grateful to come back home where it's quiet and has color. You know, even nothing has sound. Nothing has color. All the different colors of whatever it is that belongs there. Well, anyway, sorry. I'm just an old sentimental gal, I guess. But sometimes me and my kids will walk the grounds. It wasn't a real hard walk. And we'd sometimes end up behind the plant there because technically we're neighbors. And there were so many trees. It was around Christmas time and, and me and my son, we went out looking for a Christmas tree. It wasn't, it wasn't the first time, but uh, it was the last time. See, something went terribly wrong. That, that smell was unbearable. So we, we put our shirts up over our face and we walked up to, to blue water and, and dead animals in it, even mice. But I remember walking to the bus stop to get my son off the bus. And I had gotten halfway to the stop when I heard this explosion. See, I could see smoke up at the chemical plant. And the men were running out of the chemical plant and screaming and, and hollering. I, I could still hear them screaming. I will always hear them screaming. It was a kind of a wailing that only comes from great pain. The raging and, and ravenous fire of death. And when they got up the road about halfway, I see some of the men's clothes look like it had melted or something. I wanted to scream with them, for them. I will never not see that. You don't forget about suffering the first time you experience it. I went up to my sister's house to call someone and, and there was a woman who worked for the rescue squad who said to bring whatever water we can. See, the men were almost at the top of the road and she told us to set them down and wrap them in sheets and, and cut off anything that was stuck on them. Oh Lord, my heavenly father. Those poor men, the clothes had melted into their skin. Their skin was stuck on their clothes. Now, how was I going to get the clothes off without? Oh, it was so bad. But 
I will never be able to not see that. Uh, sometimes you just have to give in to faith because really you run out of choices. The fire won't just shut up in my bone, but according to doctors, it was almost my whole body burnt. I quit feeling it. I don't know when I quit feeling it. I remember hearing the explosion and it was like, like nothing you'd ever imagine. Boom town, new town. These grown men screaming like babies hungering for their mama's tit or got real bad case of diaper rash or something. All us screaming before we realize what happened cause the pain was immediate. It hit before the pain, it was fire and chemicals keeping the fire and we on fire and the plants on fire and our clothes on fire and our skins on fire and thin hope of money comforts on fire and my grandbabies on fire. No, oh, that's all you see. And maybe that's what stopped the fire. I think it did. I think it happened so fast. I went to a pain-free place where I stayed for about 11 days and went on to the next place. And I guess we were all going to the quiet and pain-free place at the same time. Me, John Hopper, Maury Clark, Keith Woods, and some of my, some of my neighbors, I reckon. Seems right anyway, but they left me. But that was our last three hours together before they left going to the next place they supposed to go. Maybe I'll see them again, or maybe not. <laughs> see, all of us lost whole families. Someone had to bury them. All of us lost some family and, and someone had to bury them. But then there are those who lost family and had to bury them and worry about hospital bills. I mean, it was only right to hold responsible the ones responsible. Those workers were faithful doing what you said and what you paid for. How are we gonna survive now? So the four of us with us went to court and we got combined $110,000. And this money was also to be used to pay for the hospital. But wasn't it nice that Greenwood added $10,000 to be divided according to state law? Workers' compensation took our rights away to get a larger settlement from Greenwood. We tried. We appealed under a civil rights clause called environmental justice because it violated our civil rights to have a clean environment. And we fought against Greenwood as well as the Virginia Department of Labor and Industry because they enforce safety standards. We couldn't get more help or apology or nothing. I lost my husband and my children lost their father. We all lost life in some form or other and literal. My morning will never end. 
and, and I'm mourning me and the easy breathing I used to have. Mourning the lungs I lost. Not feeling sorry for me. Just mourning me. So what happened was the EPA dug up 15,000 tons of soil and sludge, 15,000 tons. They incinerated some on site and hauled the rest out west somewhere where they take these types of material. Then they replaced the old soil with clean soil, although they could only do two feet because they couldn't dig deep enough. But everything's fine. Just stay away from the two acres surrounding the plant. That's all. The chemicals seeped much deeper than we had hoped, contaminating the groundwater around. Again, in our effort to heal the community and reassure the community that we can be a community again, there's more great news. Are you Mr. Ward? Charles Ward Jr. at your service. I guess you're the last one. The other three came about a week ago. They were getting here. You were 11 days. Me too. Yes, sir. I bet I found out how old he is. So, am I? Yes, sir. You in between. I got Newtown because we're all from Newtown. So what happened? Drink the water? How'd you know? Got rained on. And I snuck and ate some wild berries too. I didn't know. I mean, mama would try to tell me, but she always said a hard head will make a soft. That's, that's fine, that's fine. I know the saying. I mean, we were all kids. We can not just stay in the house all year. Mama said if it takes much longer, then we'd be putting our shoe prints on the ceiling. <laughs> anyway, and when the air's good, I reckon our folks were happy to have us out of the house. I kept feeling rain on a sunny day. The devil was beating up his wife again. But then we couldn't hardly go outside again because they told them to wash whatever fallen crystals from the sky touched our clothes that came from the explosion. Hannah said it wasn't the pressure cooker. She said she even saw a dog dead because his legs stopped working. Dogs breathe air too. So when you say colored, it's not just white people, is it? Well, you ready? I got to come back because there's going to be some more colored people waiting to go to the next place. Well, take me to your leader. Again, in our effort to heal the community and reassure the community that a community that, that we can be a community again, well, there's more great news. Guess what? Property is going to house a workforce training center for the renewable energy sector. Isn't that great? Just be mindful about the water. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that is the end of our program for today. First, I would like to invite all of the actors to come back on the stage. So show show your faces to your adoring fans. And we're all going to give you a round of applause. Yay!
Um, we really can't do anything without the hard work of everybody who you see on this screen and uh, those who chose not to come back on the screen. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a couple minutes. Um, Boomi is going to uh, play a song and we're going to show the Zoom link for our conversation to invite you all to join us. So let's turn our videos off. We're going to watch. Uh, take a, a couple minutes to reconnoiter. I highly recommend grabbing yourself a beverage if you like using the facilities um, and we will meet back here in a few minutes. Thank you all so much for being part of this. <laughs> I've been walking all my life Walking to find some break from strife. See the man had me down. So I heard about Newtown. I got the blues, Lord, I got the blues. I got the new boom town blues, yeah. Man, this don't make no kind of sense. All right. Hello, everybody. Okay. I'm going to give everybody a, just another minute to um, reconvene and connoiter and join us. Um, um, so one of the things I wanted to sort of poll everybody um, before we get this started is um, we do want to have an internal recording of these um, of these uh, conversations for our records. Um, if anybody has an issue with that being public, will you raise your hand and we'll stop the live recording and we'll just do an internal recording. But if you're fine with everything just sort of being out there, then we'll just keep the recording going. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, yeah, so if anybody and you feel free to, to message me privately and be like, 
I don't, I don't want to be part of this. Um, and we'll shut it off. Um, so let's, mom, why don't we go ahead and stop the live recording? And then we'll just do an internal recording for our archival playwright purposes. Does that sound good to everybody? Is that? Yes? Yes?